Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In this video, we're again going to be talking about something really useful, and that is following up on a technique for creating hair cutouts, which we discussed in the previous video. In this video, we're going to be showing you the same technique, but for a tougher problem, we're going to try to make hair selections, including the hair strands. So let's get right into it. To demonstrate this process, Let's use this image. By the way, I've tackled the same problem with Affinity Photo as well. So do watch that video if you're also interested in Affinity. Do note that both Affinity Photo and Pixelmator Pro have drastically different tools with each having its own strengths and weaknesses. At the end of this video, I'll also tell you which one I preferred. As you can see, this image has very beautiful hair strands which would really be nice to include in the hair cutout. Let's see if that can be done. As a reminder, if you watched the previous video, the AI tool's operations are destructive. As such, a good first step is to duplicate the layer. To avoid confusion, I'll rename the layer. The first step I'm going to do is to focus on the hair strands. I'll add a mask. I'll press Command I to invert. Alternatively, you can also click the option in the menu. Next, let's select the hair strands. Note that despite the advances in technology, due to the tiny size and low contrast inherent in hair strands, it might surprise you to learn that the brush tool, or any AI tool for that matter, as far as I'm aware of, is enabled to select hair strands properly. As such, I'll use a tool which gives full manual control over the process, devoid of any computer help, the polygonal selection tool. I'll zoom in real close. I'll choose polygonal selection tool. Ensure that the operation is set to add. To use the polygonal selection tool, click around the borders of the strand. Once you've reached the starting point, double click to close the selection. Let's select a few more strands. There, the core strands are selected. With the mask selected, paint white on the selection. To get a better view of this operation, let's hide the bottom mask. As you can see, only the strands are now visible while the rest of the image is hidden. I'll move the mask from the top image to the bottom image. Next, I'll perform the same steps as in the previous hair cutout video. I'll select the top layer. I'll remove the background. As you can see, Pixelmator's AI did a wonderful job except for some imperfections. As expected, the major strands were incorrectly not included in the cutout, demonstrating once again the limitations of AI for this type of problem. Let's bring back the strands by unhiding the original layer. As you can see, the strands are nicely brought back. The effect though is not perfect. Some of the strands look a bit unnatural as its opacity is too high. Thankfully, since we are using a mask, the effect can be tuned to our liking. With the mask selected, I'll paint white with a low opacity brush on the unnatural looking strands. Here is the cutout without the strands layer. And here is the cutout with the strands layer. As you can see, it's a big difference. 
So I hope you found this video helpful. Pixelmator Pro is super powerful, but which one did I prefer? Affinity Photo or Pixelmator Pro? While I do appreciate Affinity's non-destructive approach, precise luminosity masking, and compound masks, when it comes to portrait and hair selection, such as this problem, my experience is Pixelmator Pro, mostly because of its competent AI tools, lets me do the job faster with less effort. So I prefer Pixelmator Pro for this type of problem. Let me know which one you think is better if you've tried both Affinity Photo and Pixelmator Pro. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.